Hello everyone, welcome to Finance by Avisha and Arpita. In today's video, we will see the mindset of an investor. So first, we will find out the difference between a speculator, trader and an investor. Depending on how you would like to participate in the market, you can choose to speculate, trade or invest. All three types of participations are different from one another. One has to take a stake on the type of market participant he would like to be. Having clarity on this can have huge impact on profit and loss account. To help uh, you get the clarity, let us consider a market scenario and identify how each market participant, speculator, trader and investor would react to it. So let's consider a scenario. RBI in the next two days is expecting to convey to announce their latest st stance in monetary policy. Owing to the high and sticky inflation, RBI has hiked the interest rate during the previous four monetary policy review. As we know, an increase in interest rate means tougher growth prospects for corporate India. Hence, corporate earnings would take a hit. Assume there are three market participants, Sunil, Tarun and Girish. Each of them view the above scenario differently and hence would like to uh, take different actions in the market. Let us go through their thought process. Please note, I will briefly speak about option contract here. This is only for illustration purpose. We will understand more about derivatives in subsequent videos. Sunil. He thinks through the situation and his thought process is um, he feels the interest rate are at an unsustainable high level. High interest rate hampered the growth of corporate India. He also believes that RBI has hiked the interest rate to a record high level and would be really tough for RBI to hike the interest rate again. He looks at it what the popular analysts on TV are opinioning about the situation and he is happy to note that his thoughts and the analysis thoughts are similar. He concludes the RBI is likely to cut the rate if not for keeping the interest rate flat. As an outcome, he expects the market to grow up. To put his thoughts into action, he buys call option of State Bank of India. Tarun, he has a slightly different opinion about the situation. His thought process is he feels exciting RBI, uh, basically expecting RBI to cut the rate is wishful thinking in fact he thinks that nobody can clearly predict what rbi is likely to do he also identifies that the volatility in the market is high hence he believes that option contract are trading at very high premiums he knows from his previous experience why back testing that volatility is likely to drop drastically just after RBI makes its announcement. To put this thought into action, he sells 5 lots of nifty call options and expect to square off the position just around the announcement time. Now let's see what Girish thinks. He has a portfolio of 12 stocks which he has uh, been holding for over 2 years. Though he is a keen observer of the economy, he has no opinion on what RBI is likely to do. He is also not worried about policy outcome as he anyways planned to hold it on to his share for a long time. Hence, with this perspective, he feels that monetary policy is another short-term passing tide in the market and will not have a major impact in his portfolio. Even if it does, he has both the time and the patience to hold on his shares. However, Girish plans to buy 
more of his portfolio shares if the market reacts to RBI news and his portfolio basically falls steeply after the announcement is made. Now what RBI will eventually decide and what uh, what who makes man, money is not our concern. The point is to identify a speculator, a trader and investor based on their thought process. All three men seems to have logic based on what he has taken in market action. Please note Giri's decision to do nothing itself is a market action. Sunil seems to be highly cons- uh, certain on what RBI is likely to do and therefore his market action are oriented towards a rate cut. In reality, it is quite impossible to call a shot on what RBI or for that matter any regulator will do. These are complex matters and not straightforward to analyze. Betting on blind faith without rational reasoning backing one's decision is speculation. Sunil seems to have done just that. Tarun has arrived at what needs to be done based on plan if you are familiar with auction he is simply setting up a trade to take advantage of the high option premium he clearly does not speculate on what rbi is likely to do as he does not uh, it does not matter to him his opinion is simple volatility is high hence the premiums are attractive for an option seller he is expecting the volatility to drop just before rbi decision is speculating on the fact that volatility will drop not really because he seems to uh, have back tested this strategy for similar uh, similar scenarios in the past a trader design all the trades and not just speculates on an outcome Girish the investor on the other hand seems to be least bit worked up on what RBI is expected to do he sees this on the short term market noise which may not have any major impact on the portfolio even if he uh, have an impact he believes that portfolio will eventually recover from it Time is the only luxury market offers and Girish is keen on leveraging this luxury to the maximum. In fact, he is even prepared to buy more of his portfolio stocks in the case market overreacts. His idea is to hold on to his position for a long period of time and does not get swayed by short term market moments. All three of them have different mindset which lead them to react differently to the same situation. So our focus is to understand why Girish the investor has long term perspective and not really bothered about short term investments in the market. Now we'll understand the compounding effect. To appreciate why Girish decide to stay invested and not really react to short term market one must understand how market compounds compounding in simple word is the ability of money to grow when year one are reinvested for year two for example consider investing rupees thousand which is expected to grow at rupees 20 percent year on year recall this is also called the CAGR at the end of the first year the money is expected to grow by rupees 120 at the end of year one you have two options let rupees 20 in profit remain invested along with the original principle of rupees 100 or withdraw the profit of rupees 20 you decide to withdraw rupees 20 profit instead you decide to reinvest the money for the second year at the end of the second year, 120 grows to 144. At the end of third year, 144 grows to 173 and so on and so forth. Compare this um, Compare this with 
विद ड्रॉइंग रुपीज ट्वेंटी प्रॉफिट एवरी ईयर हैड यू ऑप्टेड टू विद ड्रॉ रुपीज ट्वेंटी एवरी ईयर देन एट द एंड ऑफ थर्ड ईयर योर प्रॉफिट वुड बी फोर्टी हाउ एवर सिंस यू डिसाइडेड टू स्टे इन्वेस्टेड द प्रॉफिट एट द एंड ऑफ द थ्री ईयर्स आर रुपीज वन सेवेंटी थ्री a good of rupees 13 or 21.7% over rupees 60 is generated because you opted to do nothing and decide to stay invested this is called the compounding effect let us take this analysis a bit further have a look at the chart from this you can look at the chart um so you can see that uh, how rupees 100 invested at 20% grows over a period of 10 years if you notice it it took almost 6 years for the money to grow from rupees 100 to 300 however the next 300 are generated in only 4 years that is from 6th to 10th year this is in fact the most interesting property of the compounding effect the longer you stay invested the harder and faster the money works for you this is exactly why girish decide to stay invested to exploit the luxury of time that the market offer all the investments made based on fundamental analysis require the investor to stay committed for long period the investor have to basically the investor has to develop their mindset while he chooses to invest now coming to the third part does invest work think about a uh, basically a sapling if you give it the right amount of water manure and care would it not grow of course it will likewise think about a good business with healthy sales great margin innovative products and ethical management this is not obvious that the market share of such companies would appreciate in some scenario the price appreciation may delay recall the aishur motor chart for the previous chapter but it will always appreciate this has happened over and over across markets in the world including india an investment in a good company defined by investable grade attributes will always yield result however one had has to develop an appetite to digest short term market volatility investable grade attribute what does that mean so let us discuss briefly on an investable grade company have uh, that that has a few distinguishable characters these characters can be classified on two heads one is the quantitative aspect and other is the qualitative aspect the process of evaluating a fundamental stronger company include a study of both these aspects in fact i give the quant- uh, qualitative aspect a little more importance over the quantitative aspect of my personal investment practice qualitative investment aspect involves understanding the non numeric aspects of the business these uh include many factors such as management background who are they their background experience education do they have the merit to run the business any criminal cases against the promoter etc business ethics is the management involved in scams bribery unfair business practices corporate governance appointment of directors organization structure transparency etc minority shareholders how does the management treat minority shareholders do they consider their interest 
while taking corporate action share transaction is the management buying selling share of the company through uh, promoter group now related party transaction is the management paying themselves a salary usually a percentage of profit operating activity in stocks does the stock price display unusual price behavior especially when the promoter is transacting in the share shareholder who are the significant shareholders in the firm who are the people with about 1% of the stake in the company political affirmation is the company or the promoter to choose to a political party does the business require constant political support promoter lifestyle are the promoters too uh, loud about their lifestyle do they like to display their wealth a red flag is raised when one, any of the factors above me, uh, above that i mentioned do not fall in the right place for example if a company undertakes too many related party transaction it would send favoritism and malpractice this is not good in long run so even if the company have a great profit margin malpractice is not acceptable the it would only be a matter of time before the market discovers matters about related party transaction and punishes the company by bringing the stock price lower hence an investor would be better off not investing in companies with great margins if such a company score low on corporate governance now coming to the quality uh, quantitative aspects not easy to uncover because these are very subtle matters however a diligent investor can easily figure this out by paying attention to the annual reports management interviews news reports etc as we proceed through this uh, this video we'll highlight various qual uh, quantitative aspects the quantitative aspects are matter related to financial number some of the quantitative aspects are straightforward while some of them are not for example cash held in inventory is straightforward however inventory number of days is not this is a matrix that needs to be calculated the stock market pay a lot of attention to quantitative aspects quantitative aspects include many things so it includes profitability and its growth margins and its growth earnings and its growth matter related to expense operating efficiency pricing power matter related to taxes dividend payout cash flows from various activities debt both short term and long term working capital management asset growth investments financial ratios the list is virtually endless in fact each sector have different metrics for example for retail industry total number of shares average sales per store total sales per foot square foot margin uh, own store to franchisee ratio now for oil and gas industry oil and gas industry revenue ratio exploration cost opening oil balance developed reserves total production growth over the few other videos that we will cover we will understand how to read the basic financial statement as published in the annual report as you may know the financial statement is the source of all the number crunching required to analyze the quantitative aspect so key takeaways from this video are 
the mindset of an investor and a trader is different investor has to develop an investment mindset if he is serious about investing the investor should stay invested for long period of time for the returns to compound the speed at which the money doubles increase drastically the more time you stay invested this is one of the properties of compounding every investment has to be evaluated on two aspects quantitative and qualitative quantitative aspects revolve around non numeric information related to the company while the quantitative aspect involve analyzing numeric data the financial statements are an important source of finding quantitative data so this is all about the video on the mindset of an investor if you gain a lot of knowledge please hit like to this video and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends for more such video consider subscribing to the channel thanks for watching bye bye